Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Tyler from House of Cards TCG coming at you again with another live duel. This one at Locals. On the right we have our teammate Shane, or Frank, I'm sorry. He was in the 3v3 with us. And on the left is me. I am playing Virtual World. Frank is playing Sky Striker. He's an insane Sky Striker player. He's been playing Striker. He's been playing that since I've known him. So, without further ado, let's dive on into this live at Locals Striker versus Virtual World. And it looks like we're going to see the Striker player go first? Question mark? All right, we are going to go ahead and dive on in to game number one here, and we're going to see the matchup between Frank and I, and this is also a reminder to please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. We are so close to 2,000 subs that we are trying to hit by the end of the month, so please help us get there and make sure to subscribe. We post daily. So Frank knew I was on Virtual World, so he decided to go ahead and go first here rather than let me set up my board. So he is going to go ahead and set three and pass, and looking at my hand, it looks like my hand is cracked here. I have Itali, Water Enchantress, Roshi, Kirin. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and activate the Water Enchantress. Water Enchantress is going to go ahead and banish itself, and then it's going to be able to search out a Rite of Armesier. So, uh, real strong opening. This is going to set up our Omni Negate, and let's see what he decides to do here. It also forces out, I found from playing this deck, it forces out cards like Torrential Tribute, because your opponent has to make sure that they don't let the Omni Negate resolve. It, it just forces two cards out. Like, right now, if you're playing a back row deck and they set three... You'd have to force two. So we're going to see the Faithful Venture come down. That's the uh, one that just keeps recurring itself. So it's pretty insane there. We are going to go ahead and drop down the E-Telly. The E-Telly is going to go ahead and trigger the Faithful Adventure and allow us to grab the Draco back from our hand. So on that, this is a good way to go ahead and get the uh, get the Draco back into your hand. Use it as discard fodder or also to bounce Floodgates. That's really important too. You want to be able to bounce the Floodgates. Uh, we are going to go ahead and see the Faithful Adventure come down. So we do activate the effect. That's going to go ahead and grab the Griffin. Let's see what his hands are. I know that I remember this matchup. I remember that Frank and I went back and forth because he he drew a lot of hand traps. So we striker normally plays twelve to fifteen hand traps. So we discard the Draco back off the resolution of searching Griffin, and then we're going to use its effect to equip it to the token. And now let's see what we decide to do. We are probably going to activate the Griffin to summon. And that's going to go ahead and summon an attack. Right now, it looks like we have about 5,500 on field. Even trying to, if we're just trying to swing for game. I mean, we're, we're close to game here. Kieran, I think, provides another 1,800 attack. So we're getting close to already having game. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and activate Kieran, target Nian. That's going to send Chuchi and Qinglong. Which is what we're going to do there, I would imagine. Yep. It's just a matter of what uh, what line that we want to go here. This could be a quick game one, depending on what uh, what what Frank's board is. So we are going to go ahead and activate Qinglong. Qinglong is going to search out Lulu, and let's see what we decide to discard here. Probably the Water Enchantress. Oh, Tai. Yes. Yeah, so I have a two card Sword Soul engine in my deck that you're probably going to find out from my deck profile. So the two card Sword Soul engines, Tai and Blackout. So we are going to go ahead and discard the Tai here. And then we are going to go ahead and Lulu target the Kirin. I would imagine we sent a Jean Wu. And then we're going to go ahead and search City. City is now going to be able to allow, allow us to put Chuchi up. A lot of people, especially Striker, has problems dealing with Chuchi. Chuchi is a really good card because every time that they go to battle and they try to battle with Hayate, you could just uh, pop it and it stops a lot of their um, effects from resolving. So we are going to see a Valor come down on the Griffin. You already know what's coming next. If the Valor comes down on Griffin, I thought about this afterwards also. If they Valor target Griffin, I probably should have negated with Griffin to shuffle it back into the deck. And have that as resource. He's going to go ahead and flip the TC Boo. TC Boo does not really affect us at all because the token is a fairy. Then Griffin is Winged Beast. And then we had Nian, which was a Psychic. Lulu, which was a Psychic. And Kieran, which was a Worm. So we have Fairy, Winged Beast, Worm, and Psychic on the field. So all we lost was a Nian. And Nian could just basically bring itself back. So I don't even know if I go Draco back, bounce it here because... Oh, he, he drops the Rock. He drops the Rock. Yeah, all right. So Valor and then the Rock comes down. And we're going to go ahead and lose the Draco back too. Yeah. Unfortunate. But look, hey, Valor and Nib crush most combo decks. So let's be honest, okay? So we're just talking about the size of the token. It was actually pretty large there. So yeah, basically going back and forth, like Valor Nib, nothing you could do there. Just like an Imperm Nib. It's just going to stop a lot of combo decks. So if you got it, you got it. Um, 
The good thing is, is that I have a very large token that he does have to get over though, and that's going to be a problem, as well as now he has Nib in his main monster zone. So he does have uh, some work to do, and we're going to go ahead and resolve City and be able to get our Chuchi. We need to be able to banish something else. I probably should have chained Chuchi to the Nib. That would have been really good. So then I had two. Uh, but, but we're still going to play. <laughs> it's actually insane. We're still going to play. Roshi's actually about to go in. Because Roshi can then bring back the Lulu and bring back or bring back Nian and just go for Shinshin. Because you don't want to go Lulu and then Nian because they're all going to be tuners. So that doesn't really do much for you, I guess. Or you can bring back Kirin. Yeah, Kirin's pretty good too. We still have Jean Wu. Yeah, so we're just uh, just going over the cards to make sure he is confirming that Roshi can bring back. Oh, wait. I can't bring back Lulu or Nian because I still have TC Boo live. Yes, correct. So I have to actually bring back Kirin because Kirin is a worm. Fun fact, too. You can overlay these into M7. Because M7 is a um, machine here. But then you can't go into Zeus. So. Let's see what we decide here. I think maybe we go Beatrice. Use Beatrice effect. We still have Jean Wu too, so. I guess we're looking through our extra deck. Let's see what we decide to do. We do go M7. I think that that was a misplay because we can't actually go into Zeus now. I think that we should have went Beatrice, use Beatrice effect, set up the follow-up, and then... Oh, actually, we just bounce the... Oh, we can't. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is actually really strong. So we just add back the Taiyi. That's actually really strong. I'm not going to lie. So he's going to flip over called by. I want to check and see if M7 targets. Yes, it definitely targets. So he goes ahead and hits the call by on the Taiyi. That was really strong. I think Taiyi would have provided us some follow-up for next turn because we could have went into our Baxia or our Grandmaster. Um, maybe, maybe not because of TC Boo. But we are going to go ahead and use the Jean Wu. Jean Wu is then going to be able to bring back, I would imagine, uh, Lulu or Kirin. Doesn't matter. And that's just, I think we're just doing Jean Wu here just to put make Chuchi live and just to get additional damage in. So we are going to be able to swing with the M7 and swing with, say, a Lulu or a Kirin here. So he's just reading Jean Wu, making sure that, like I said, he. Frank, Frank likes to double check his cards. So let's see. He's going to read out Jean Wu. And from here, I mean, we're still looking pretty strong. I do think that Beatrice was the better play. Uh, we did force a call by, though, as well. Either way, call, call by probably gets forced. But adding Taiyi is not incorrect. It's pretty good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and activate Chuchi. Chuchi's going to go ahead and pop the... Um, there can be only one. And I guess that's one way to deal with uh, the, the field. So then you can go into Zeus. He just wants to read this to make sure it's correct. Um, we're going to go ahead and discard the droplet for that. And he's asking if it has to be in defense. And I was explaining to him, no, it could be an attack. And it doesn't. nothing happens in phase with it. It's just brought out. Kind of an insane card if you think about it. I know that some virtual world players, when they mix in different engines, will cut it. But no, that's... Um, I'm telling him here that I completely forgot about the nib. And as I'm actually commentating, again, I'm forgetting about the nib that's on the field that I have to deal with. I was just about to swing it, uh, attack directly and go for Zeus line until I remember that there's a nib on the field. And for some reason, I forgot that there was a nib on the field while I was commentating again. So we are going to go ahead and pass to him. Uh, it does not look like his top deck was really good. But again, we went through Valor, Nib, TC Boo, called by. He's got one more face down and card in hand that we still have to deal with. Uh, so we're going to go nib into my M7. Yeah, it definitely should have been Beatrice there. And again, I actually can't go for Zeus either way because I can't attack. So it doesn't matter. Uh, now we got this huge token. The token's actually going to go in. We got a ton of follow-up in our grave. Uh, I think that we're pretty much going to combo freely. He does have two back row set though. So now we don't even have to worry about nib here. So we're going to see a Qinglong. Qinglong is then going to go ahead and grab a Lulu. Now we can actually Lulu target Chuchi. That should be able to send us... Uh, we, what do we shuffle back? We could send a... 
another spell, add a monster, probably grabs a Roshi. If he's got another TC Boo, we are trying to make Chu Chi live in order to be able to do that. So we do send a Ching Long here, summons the Lulu, we grab Roshi, and then, uh, so just asking about Jean Wu, if there's any restrictions that end phase with Jean Wu, and I said no, there's not. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and trigger Nian. So when Lulu is summoned, it gets to summon itself back from the field as a tuner. So we are going to trigger Nian on the summon of Lulu. And he is going to go ahead and flip over TC Boo. Here's what we could do here, though. We can go ahead and chain Chuchi, target Nian, and then we're going to chain Chuchi on the field to pop it. So that is a play that you can do there. So you can actually, you can chain the trap and then chain Chuchi to pop. So he's just confirming to make sure that we are able to do that. And I basically told him, yes, that is a legal activation to be able to do it. Because Chuchi says you can use each of the effects once per turn. So you actually can, in fact, chain Chuchi to banish itself, effect to target, and then you could chain the Chuchi on the field to then pop the TC Boo. And that's how we're going to be able to get around this TC Boo. Because, I mean, honestly though, even if the TC boot does come down, like we lose a Nian or a Lulu, it's not that serious. But I think we're trying to go for game here because we don't want to deal with striker cards. Because once striker gets rolling, they could be a problem and they could be very difficult to deal with. So you just got to go for OTK against them. And uh, you can't let them get off because then you're just a just never-ending chase. So again, we're just going back and forth here just making sure that everything is correct here with the cards. And the only thing left now that we have to worry about is his last back row. So we are going to go ahead and shuffle the Qinglong and the Chuchi back into the deck. And then we are going to go ahead and take the Nian and the Kirin. And we make a Sigma. So we targeted Nian to up its level. So Sigma is actually an insane card. And Striker has a hard problem. I actually put Sigma in my deck to deal with Fluunderies and to deal with Striker. Because Fluunderies is getting really popular. All you got to do... You summon Sigma, good luck. GG's. They can't out it. Like, how does Fluunderese deal with the towers that can't be as unaffected by cards? So you can't even have its attack. Like, Impeng can't get over it. No, they don't play a single card that actually outs your um, Sigma. So we're going to see Water Enchantress come down. Water Enchantress is then going to be able to come down. We activate Right. Right's going to bring out a token. And I think that the token beats over the nib. But let's see what happens. So we're going to take Lulu and the token. Go for Yazi. Yazi effect is going to go ahead and activate. This is insane, actually. So we are going to go ahead and uh, target the nib on the field with the Yazi. And uh, that's going to go ahead and... Let's see what he's got here. He's going to flip a droplet. He's going to send the nib to negate the Yazi, which is okay. That's fine, right? So that's just game one field. So then he realizes that. So we are going to move on to game two. The token was at like 4,500 attack. And then the Sigma at 3,000. And then you had the Yazi, even with its attack half, still attacks for game there. So we are going to see game one go to Virtual World. And let's move on into game number two and see what uh, Frank decides to do. Will he go first? Will he go second? I guess we will find out. All right, moving on into game number two. We are going to go ahead and see Frank decide to go first here. And we also want to remind you to make sure to subscribe to the channel so that we can hit 2,000 subs by the end of the month. And if you enjoy this type of play, we usually upload about two or three live duels a week. And then the other four days, we typically put up a deck profile. You could see other things like uh, how to beat other decks as well as how to improve your gameplay. So it looks like we are going to go ahead and see Frank decide to go first. Which is weird for the striker strategy, but he knows that the board is really hard to break. And my hand it looks insane. I have Droplet. I have Cosmic. I only play one of a Droplet against striker, and I actually drew it. But we are going to see a Prosperity come down. Uh, he's got to dig, basically try to get to that Ray here. So let's see if he goes for three or six. Let's see what he decides. So I was going through my uh, side deck to make sure, and I was like, yeah, the Droplet, the one of, because I had nothing else to side in. So I put one Droplet in my deck, left one Droplet in my deck, and of course, of course, I see it. It does, it's not that great, right? It's not that great against Striker, so. It's okay. It definitely doesn't do anything, though. I'll be honest. So it looks like Frank is going to go ahead and dive six deep. 
Let's see what he reveals here. Looks like a rose, a ray, a dasher, the destiny, an ash blossom, and a called by it. That's actually an insane mill. You can see rose, you can see ray, you got fusion destiny, you got a hand trap, you got a called by. It looks like he is going to go ahead and grab the fusion destiny. Probably means that he has ray in his hand because why else would you not grab ray? Correct? Correct. Okay. So let's see what he decides to drop down here. We're going to see the ray. Imagine that. I, I didn't see that coming. So we're going to see the ray come down. And then he's going to go ahead and link the ray. And that's going to go for the shiz. So we're going to see the shiz come down there. And uh, I think it's just going to be a lot. And then the fusion destiny is going to come down at the end. So that's going to send the dasher and the celestial from hand. And, of course, uh, shiz is going to allow him to add a spell at the end phase. So that's pretty good. So let's see if he sets anything. We essentially we have a pop and then depending on his hand he could have hand traps it looks like he is going to set one leave one in hand so actually droplet coming in clutch here not gonna lie because now droplet can deal with the enforcer so hi or shiz is going to add engage of course at end phase and uh, this isn't terrible depending on the back row um our griffin can deal with the back row Droplet deals with the Enforcer, so we have one unknown card in hand. It could be a nib. That's the only thing, so let's see what he decides here. Uh, our hand looks pretty good from what I can see. I saw an E-Telly. It's always fantastic to see that. Jean Wu, which is discard fodder, and we have a Cosmic. Oh, we got Cosmic. So we're going to go ahead and activate E-Telly. He is going to go ahead and chain the Enforcer, which completely told me that that is 100% Scythe. So as soon as he chained that, I was like, yo, that's Scythe. For sure. For sure. So the Cosmic's going to come down on the Scythe. There's no other reason for him to chain Enforcer to my e -Telly except for that to be a Scythe. Uh, moving the Cosmic from the left zone to there didn't do anything. I, st I still didn't activate it in the Imperm. And I was like, I just said, oh, let's go. That's what I just said. I was like, let's go. Um, um, because, uh, I, I was correct on my call there. So, uh, Itali is going to go ahead and then resolve. And then Enforcer is going to go ahead and activate. It's going to pop probably in my Cosmic and whatever. So we're going to see Nian come down. Now we just have one unknown card in hand to deal with. We Like, that's insane that we one Cosmic literally outed the Enforcer and outed the Scythe. One Cosmic. So now all we have to do is open up the lulu that's like that's that's game we have one negate on the unknown card in hand and then we otk here pretty much so lulu is then gonna go ahead and grab city we're gonna dump the chuchi add cities city's gonna go ahead and bring up the chuchi and uh let's see what we decide to do here we didn't send a ching long which is actually surprising there for me i feel like that maybe was something i should have done we're gonna take the lulu and the nian and i think we're gonna go for a stardust charge here we are so Stardust. Let's see what it draws us into. We need a we need a good we need a good draw here. We need a good draw because I don't see another name, so that could have been a misplay. Uh, Jean Wu droplet and something else. So let's see. It is a name. Oh, that's insane! Oh, never fails. Never punished. Never punished. And it's a Kieran of all things. Double foolish. Let's go. Never punished. Yo, Virtual World loves me. My draws are insane. I, that was a uh, terrible gameplay by me, but it worked in my favor. And actually, the OTK is going to come down because of the Stardust draw. Um, Kieran, Double Foolish goes for Beatrice. Now we can activate Be Beatrice. B is going to go ahead and uh, discard or detach the Kirin. That's going to send the Water Enchantress. This is going to set up our Omni Gate. That deals with the one card in hand that we don't know that's an unknown. So Wright's going to come down. That brings out a token. Gets the Faithful Adventurer. Now we have the Jean Wu in hand to discard as we can go ahead and search for Griffin. And I think Frank is uh, shaking his head because he knows that this is about to be OTK for him. So we do discard the Jean Wu, summon the Griffin. There's our Omni Negate. Now, uh, we make Chuchi live, we pop, and then we go for game. That's essentially... But we do want to make sure that if this is a nib in his hand, that we do actually are able to OTK with losing our Griffin, because Griffin does shuffle itself back into the deck. So we want to make sure that we still OTK, even if we do lose Griffin. Uh, so I think that's where the line that we're going to go here. Um, so Beatrice being 2,500, Token being 2, the Griffin being two, so that's right now is 6,500. We're going to go ahead and Ching Long. Ching Long should grab Gigi. Or grabs Roshi. Actually, Roshi is insane here. We're going to go ahead and droplet the, discard the droplet. We still have an Itali in hand. Itali's actually going to deal with the Jean Wu. We can do the combo, which is 
going to come up. I know for sure that's coming up. That's why we saved it there. So Roshi's going to go ahead and bring back out the Lulu. That's going to trigger Nian. Nian's then going to come out. Uh, now here, we're going to take the Nian and the Griffin. And then that is going to go ahead and bring out a Baron. Because, again, we still just need the one Omni Negate. Now we can take the Lulu and the Token. That is going to go ahead and make a Yazi. Now we can... Um, we accidentally messed, misplayed here. We used Baron to pop Yazi instead of using Yazi effect. But I said Baron effect to pop. And I was thinking turn one combo. I completely misplayed there. I know, roast me, but we still have Chuchi live. Like, it's fine. It's fine. So... What we did here was we used Baron to pop Yazi. That's going to trigger the Yazi. Yazi's going to go ahead and bring back out Taiyi. And then we can uh, Taiyi banish the Yazi. And that's going to bring out another token. Uh, it should actually summon Taiyi in defense. So he's uh, just reading. He is uh, getting lined up on this OTK right here. So we're going to go ahead and see Taiyi should be in defense. We're going to banish Yazi. That's going to go ahead and bring out a Sword Soul token. And then we can take both of those. And that's going to bring out, I think, our Baxia. I think we go Baxia here. Yeah, for sure Baxia. And then Baxia is going to be able to spin back the Shiz and get that off the field. He has to, I think, trigger Ray here. So he is going to go ahead and trigger Ray. Again, uh, we easily deal with Ray. We, uh, all we have to do is activate Chuchi. And we have 2,500 from Beatrice, 2,300 from Baxia, and then 3,000 from our uh, Barons. We're actually 200 short right now on the game. <laughs> Not that it's a problem. We're, we're going to be fine. Um, I, oh, yeah, because we have Jean Wu and we have Itali still. So, so Jean Wu is going to go ahead and pop the Ray. And then we're going to go ahead and banish... Oh, oh, I shuffled back Nian and Ching Long. Uh, he activated Ray Effect to tag out. So actually, Chuchi does not resolve, so I do not shuffle those back in. So now we have a Hayate to deal with. And it's like, oh, this just keeps going, huh? We probably should have negated that. But again, we need that negate for the unknown in hand. I just did not want to get dropped with Nib. So we're going to go ahead and Baxia, target Faithful Adventure. Because again, we're just going for game now. That's going to bring back the Taiyi. And then we're going to take the Taiyi and the uh, Roshi here. And that's going to go ahead and make ourselves a Sovereign. And now this is uh, going to this is gonna do it here. I mean, this is going to be game. Uh, I think that Frank probably realizes we do activate Jean Wu. So the, the play here, what you do is you, if you have a card in hand and it's Itelli, you activate Jean Wu because you can legally activate it. Then you chain Itelli, right? So when you chain Itelli... Uh, it's going to resolve backwards. Itali allows you to summon. And then Jean Wu summons as well. But you don't have to discard because you legally can't. You don't have a card to discard. It is a legal activation. I think we do get back and forth on it. But it is a legal activation. So if you go Jean Wu, chain Itali, both resolve. And you do not have to discard a card from Jean Wu. Uh, that is a way to play around Jean Wu and get more bodies. So basically, you see the Kirin and the Lulu. That's going to make ourselves Shin Shin. As well as Trigger Sovereign to banish. So we have everything. We have the Omni Negate with Baron. We have Baxia. We have Sovereign that's going to trigger to banish uh, Ray, And it's going to banish the Hayate. So that dealt with all that. And we have Kirin and Lulu which goes into a Shinshin as well as Beatrice. So as you can tell we are in fact going to go ahead and swing for game. Uh, we do have a little back and forth discussion about, he's like, you know, you legally can't activate John Wu. I'm like, yes, you can. I'm trying to explain to him that I can banish John Wu, chain Itali. When I activated John Wu, it was a legal activation because I had a card in hand. Then when I chain Itali, I don't have to discard at this point because now I don't have a card in hand. But both cards still resolve and I summon off Itali and you still summon back with the John Wu. So that is going to go ahead and be confirmed by our judge at Locals. AKA Najee. <laughs> Shout out to Najee on that one. Um, but yeah, that's going to pretty much be a wrap here, guys. Uh, like I said, we're going to confirm this ruling. It does get confirmed. And so what we do here is we just swing for game. But uh, yeah, if you enjoy this content, I know that there is going to be a future video where Frank wants a rematch and we do go back and forth on a really, really, really good match between Frank and I. So he is our partner at the 3v3. I probably posted his deck profile by now. But um, yeah, guys, if you, do, if you get a chance, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this. And this is going to be the crushing blow. That is going to be game. And this is uh, just going to take it. Virtual World takes this one 2-0 against the Sky Striker player. But I have a feeling the Sky Striker player will be coming back so all right all make sure to like and subscribe and this has been tyler with house of cards tcg signing out house of cards.
of cards. TCG.